welcome everybody uh, to the Zeta Talks today. Uh, we are joined by Mart Maggi, who is the Director General of Statistics Estonia. Uh, and we will talk about Tree of Truth today, which is a monitoring dashboard developed by Statistics Estonia. Uh, the governmental agency uh, operates at the intersection of administration and the Ministry of Finance uh, and tries to provide reliable um, and up-to-date statistics for the country. Uh, not only to use by public administrations, but also citizens and individuals. Uh, and one of their uh, efforts in this regard is the Tree of Truth, the dashboard that we will talk about today. Uh, Marta, I will give the floor to you in a minute. You can introduce the project uh, and we can do questions in between. Um, to the audience, I would like to point out that at the end of the session, we uh, do a dedicated Q&A. But if you have questions in the meantime, please uh, type your question in chat or raise your hand and I, we can address them in between. Um, also, please keep yourself muted um, and on a general note, uh, the session is recorded and will be on our uh, YouTube channel afterwards, uh, but I will mention more at the, about this at the end. Um, that's it for my part. Mart, I would like to give the floor to you. Hello, everyone. So, uh, really pleasure to be here in a, in a podcast. So, please, uh, all the questions uh, which are uh, related to the topic or all the statistics in general, uh, I mean, I'm happy to answer those uh, in the end of my presentation. So let me let me give a, a, a kind of short presentation about the tree of truth, what it is, and uh, why we have been uh, kind of uh, developing a dashboards for our cabinet, uh, but nevertheless to the citizens and to the parliament. And I will start with um, a bit of background story. And the background story goes back to uh, approximately three years. When I was appointed as the, the chief statistician in Estonia uh, three years ago, uh, my first of my mission was to give a comprehensive overview of the SDGs in Estonia and Parliament House. Uh, when I went to the event itself in the end of 2017, which was in a big room in a parliament house, and, and we was expecting to see the members of the parliament, the members of the cabinet, and, uh, and also the different experts on uh, SDGs. We saw very little of them in this particular room. So that was a huge challenge for us as a starting point. I mean, the, the key indicators, which are basically established by the government and approved by the parliament, the SDGs, but not only the SDGs, we have also our own strategic plans. Even we was giving a comprehensive overview of what is the situation in Estonia. We didn't see a particular people watching or even listening that. So that was starting point for us, and we decided something to be changed. And of course, I mean, looking across the globe, the situation also in Estonia in terms of the politicians was not on a, I would say, favorite position to uh, show what are the real results of the economy and the social affairs. So the situation in Estonia was very, I mean, demanding. We have all together 47 development plans. Uh, that's a huge number. And if you look the different indicators in those, I mean, we can count those not in hundreds, but almost in a thousands. Um, and that's not in Estonia. I mean, if you look at the EU in general, or if you look at the global level, we have a lot of indicators. The question is, what are the most relevant to them? We have, at least in Estonia, stated that there is a three development plans which is most crucial for the country. Uh, they are sustainable development. That is. Estonia 2035 development plan and also of course every government have established their own action plan for a very short period. So we can see also in a in a time frame that we have a very short time frame plan like a government action. The mid term is 2035 and sustainable development is basically ongoing all the time because we want the SDGs to be the, the crucial element of our development. Estonia also have developed uh, quite a good and comprehensive overview of the budgeting. And the budgeting is based on the activity-based costing and also activity-based budgeting itself. Though the performance areas 
and the state budget are very interlinked with each other. So it's very important to see what are the key indicators, what we are financing and what are the results out of it. Still looking on this situation, what we have saw is the number of indicators is really huge. It's once again, it's not the hundreds, it's really thousands of indicators what we see. So therefore, in our own, I mean, Statistics Estonia development plan, we have been taking a very clear approach. The indicators which are relevant to specific policy makers should be on their table on a proper time. So that's not only the indicators what we are providing, but the indicators which are provided from the other owners, the other registers or other sources. Estonia in your favorite position, the statistics itself is basically fully centralized. So we are producing the most of the indicators across different development plans. We have, of course, so the other statistical office or the statistical provider, like a central bank, but we don't have any other owners. On Still, we have the many different sources from where you can get the specific indicators for a personalized dashboards. So what we have done, we have taken this information from the other sources and from our own sources and provided the different dashboards to the different trade unions, the local government and the central government. That was a, a very first step, I would say, because uh, this step uh, was something where we wanted to get the clear and better understanding and also the discussion between the different parties like the trade unions, the local government and the central government to harmonize the meaning of indicators and that they are using the same indicators across different uh, fields of expertise. Of course, I mean, that's not getting us still to the position or the key indicators. So we decided also to de develop a comprehensive overview for the government and for the parliament so that they can easily and very simply understand where the Estonia stands. Now I should tell you another story. The other story come from Finland. I had a, a very nice interview or discussion with a previous parliament member of them uh, in Finland. And he, he told me that, Mark, you are the most stupid person in the world. Uh, he, he didn't know any politician who wants to get a very clear and picture what is the real situation. The data is needed for politicians only then when they have come up with uh, something in their mind and they want to just to fix the decision what they have already made in their mind. But nevertheless, we decided we go forward. We uh, go forward and we sh really show what are the situation in Estonia. A bit different way than we have done so far. And it's very important to understand why we do it. So is also to get the attention, attention of every single citizen in Estonia that what is really happening and are we spending our limited resources on the right things to do or not. So going forward, let me show you some of the sketches. We, uh, when we started the development of this dashboard, we had a really different views on it. We took, of course, examples also across the globe there was a lot, there wasn't a lot of those. So uh, the OECD have um, one dashboard, which is very visualized as well. But nevertheless, we, we was looking something where we can really show the different time frames of the indicators. Also something to show in a different uh, so-called uh, policy making areas. And on the same time, it should be really something which is going to the heart of the citizens. So you see a different sketches, what we developed, and we came up with a tree. 
uh, the first thing what we of course thought about uh, was why tree? I mean, it's it, uh, it's tree, and then we in a in a Scandinavian Munz is is a tree of life. Uh, so we we took a, a couple of or the part of it also in in our thing, but also the tree symbolized Estonia national tree, and the national tree of Estonia is oak. The, Question was, of course, why we called our tree not a, a statistical oak or statistical tree, but we call it tree of truth. It's also have been um, had a kind of discussion in Estonian news on, and also in a, in a political area, what and how it can be a tree of truth. But what we see, the figures normally show the truth. Nevertheless, what is the story or discussions around it. So we de developed these dashboards so that it's very easy to see what is really situation in Estonia. So what you see, that's a tree of true. You can go and visit uh, yourself in a, in a web. Uh, it's quite interactive. Uh, we did it together with Estonian local uh, uh, visualization uh, kind of uh, uh, organization, Optimist Creative. And it was developed in a couple of phases. Now we are, we just launched the 2.0 and it's always developing further because for example, also in a current stage, you don't see the figures or the indicators from the government plan because we just had a shift of the government and that is not established new indicators yet from the government uh, for the four years or two years because it's now getting a two years period. So what you see in our dashboard is the layers, that's uh, different strategical plans. So you can see there is a small interaction when I, I turn this one. So when you see all the leaves, if you just select one strategic layer like SDGs, you see only the SDG indicators. Also, you see uh, branches. Branches are the performance areas, areas where the, the government is active and have been in established uh, different development plans. Uh, leaves are the particular indicators and the indicators we have used uh, easy metaphor using three colors, green, yellow and red, showing that the green is something where basically the development is going to the right direction and or it's already above the targeted uh, level. The yellow is something where it's either not met the strategic level or the direction is shifted. And the red ones, of course, is the hardest one, but the direction may be wrong. And of course, it's uh, not met the targeted levels. The launch of our dashboard was uh, in the end of 2019, International Statistics Day, of course. Uh, that was a very big event in Estonia. We had also our president launching it, saying a very clear and very argumented words about the tree of truth. Um, the, the Tree of True of also has been nominated the Clear Message Award in 2020. It's used now widely in Estonian schools and not only schools, across also different ministries uh, in uh, discussions of the different development plans and also now in setting up the new governmental uh, plan for the next phase. It's very easy to follow once again, and it brings up a much more easier discussion to get to understanding what is really relevant to Estonia and what we need to aim to get there as well. Let me just uh, finalize with a sm small uh, uh, presentation with our uh, Prime Minister, uh, the previous Prime Minister now, but, uh, but he was giving a speech about the Tree of Truth uh, in a high-level political forum in UN. 
So it's just small introduction of it. I hope you I don't know if it's me, but I can't hear the sounds. All right. At least you see the wording downstairs or the, the subtitles? Yes, yes, the video is playing it with subtitles, yes. Yes, as you don't hear the voice, so I can share the presentation later on. You can easily click and see what he is talking. But basically, as you see, the both uh, government, now the parliament, have been taking more seriously the key indicators of the Estonia. The key indicators like SDGs, then a national development plan, and also, as I mentioned, the government uh, action plan. It's not enough. What we are doing currently is every single leaf, when we are producing it uh, from the statistical office, wherever we are giving out the information publicly, we also referring to the tree of proof. It's very important that the citizens will understand what are those key indicators and what is the direction or how we met the targets of those indicators. So what we do it, we really make uh, stories around the different leaves because the dashboard itself is not big in this term. So it's more kind of how we are providing it to the public space. That's a very kind of small and short story of the our dashboard. I'm more than happy to, to have an open discussion. So please ask uh, freely the questions and I hope there is a question already in a chat. I will Shut down the presentation now so I can see maybe the, the chat room uh, as well. Yeah, thank you for this introduction. Um, I think it's a beautiful tool to show, well, in one simple overview, pretty much how the country is doing um, and how, which progress is being made in which areas. Uh, it's very nice it's a one overview. And also for people who have no real feeling with the data, um, it's way easier to look at this um, than to look it up in a database, for example, or uh, look uh, look at the web for it. Um, I was wondering if you are aware of any um, sort of initiatives, uh, like civil society initiatives or citizen um, uh, uptake uh, of this, because it's used for policymakers. You mentioned that, but is it also used on a more uh, well on a citizen level? It's it's really used on a citizen level. Once again, it's, it's used now quite widely in uh, schools, teaching uh, in uh, classes uh, what the, the, the kind of government of Estonia or the state of Estonia, so how we are really uh, operating, uh, what is the role of the government, parliament, etc., but also what are the, the key indicators of Estonia, what uh, the Estonia wants to achieve within a couple of years. John Franco, you raise your hand. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Mark. Thanks a lot for for being with us today and and for your presentation. I I got in love with with the the Trio Truth uh, the moment I learned about it on the Open Data Maturity Report um, written by by the team I belong to here in the in the call um, uh, because it's uh, there, there are many examples of interactive visualization of data to make it more accessible or easier to digest to citizens and, and civil servants, but I don't think I ever saw something that organically put together, say, the data you start from, the objective, and where you are at in terms of achieving those objectives. So even even just for that, uh, hats off uh, to you and your team for, for, for this. My, my question um, is related to well, we know already that Estonia is very well advanced in digital. You're famous in Europe, uh, so I, I won't uh, insist too much on that further. But would, would you say that the Tree of Truth is also a further tool in your toolbox to um, to help your citizens feeling more comfortable with digital and data? And you said already how you're using it in schools. Do you know if adults are reacting well to the tool? What the feedback? Uh, what feedback have you got after launching? And are they getting closer to your work in statistics as well? Yeah, I mean, to the closer to the citizens, of course, we had a very interesting discussions now in terms of the local governments. 
um, like a counties or whichever the, the local government are in a different countries. So we, we have been thinking about should we build up a forest? Because every single uh, county is also having their own indicators, which are really crucial. And once again, the, the different bounds, like we call those, I mean, that is a very different areas, like a, like a social security, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, education, the health, uh, the economy itself. I mean, they are the most important bounds in this term. So, and if you look at the, also on the local government side, I mean, they also have a very important roles. So that's something what we are developing currently as a discussion or ongoing discussions with the local counties now. So there is a, a huge interest in terms of building really a, a small trees, <laughs> I would say, and, and all together as a, like a forest in this. And also we had a, a discussion uh, really with the Finland because they are also love this uh, this uh, type of metaphor like a tree, and they, they have their own national tree. So every single country normally have their own kind of uh, uh, plant in these terms. Is it a tree or different plants? So it's it's very easy to adapt. To the local uh, situation, so it's it's still a, a close to the heart of the citizen, I would say. And actually, when, as you were talking about the forest, I was thinking also of local administrations. So Estonia perhaps is a relatively small country, but for the civil servants in in the room, uh, who perhaps don't need much much larger countries, see layers of government, you can easily imagine each, say, region of Italy, like in my case, having their own tree, and in a way, igniting some degree of positive competition. Yeah, my tree is more green than yours, you know. Uh, I, I like I like to imagine that idea. Thanks, Matt. I think um, um, from a setting up perspective, it's it's quite hard also to get all of those indicators and measure it on one level, right? Um, we've talked about um, what how it works pretty much, but is there um, what do you encounter in terms of difficulties? Uh, because I can imagine, especially for SDGs, it's pretty hard to measure them. Um, on a standardized uh, in a standardized way and visualize it all in one overview. Uh, so what do you run into there? Yes, once again, I mean, um, the full um, uh, visualization is run on our own uh, open database. So basically it's linked with uh, the database. So if you go to the, to the visualization tool, you see very easily if you click to the leaf, you can go down and, and then you see you can get uh, kind of a linkage to our own database. So you can really go deeper and deeper and you can study more deeply what does it means, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the problems, uh, of course, are always with the statisticians uh, that how we can really produce uh, those indicators on a more timely manner. So it's not only a yearly base or it's not only kind of a, uh, looking on a two years back, so we, we want to do those indicators more kind of on a, on a more frequent pace, I would say. So we have been really now also in times of the pandemic developing the indicators which are on a on a, on a weekly pace, like a debts or, or something like those. So it's 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 very important that uh, uh, also in the future we try to really monitor those indicators on a on a very high frequency. So that's something what we are definitely want to provide even even more often. And Marty, you've been talking about homogenizing the performance indices or the the measures you've been taking. How? Sorry to, to make this question, but how hard was that? Because I'm yeah. I'm afraid it may have been quite a challenge, and it's not something that just Estonia has. I mean, across all of Europe, continuously we measure how we perform on many, uh, against many social economical dimensions. And I'm not sure that yet we got to a point where we can comfortably exchange data because we are measuring different things, right? Yeah, that's true. But in, in uh, at least on the European level, uh, what we can say that, yes, the, the most of the indicators also on a tree of truth, they are harmonized. So at least the indicator itself and how it's showing. Sometimes the data we are getting from the different sources, like we in Scandinavia, I will say, we are using more the, the register-based data, and and the southern countries are using more uh, survey-based data, of course. But but still, the, the the final outcome itself is comparable, and that's we have been developed across the Europe uh, together, all the national statistical offices together with the Eurostat. So the most of the indicators you see in in a in a tree is also uh, similar to the other countries. 
So that's uh, that's very easy part. Now, if you come to the other part is how to, to really harmonize the indicators. I can say you not on the tree of truth, but the other what I showed you as well, the, the dashboards. We had a very interesting um, uh, harmonization uh, in a tourism uh, sector because we have a trade union like a tourist and also the local counties and also the central government are very interested in what is the situation with the tourism. So we, we got together all the different counterparties and we asked a very simple question. Do you see any indicators what we are not producing yet? They, they came up with 400 indicators. After we went through our database, honestly, we, we finally got to the situation that out of the 400, we was producing 300 but the definition was not clear to them. So it's it's always question, are we speaking the same language? And the statisticians normally, I mean, they, they, they like to put a very comprehensive names to the indicators, etc. But we need to simplify it, well, it because the people don't understand. And out, by the way, from those um, 100 which left, we also had one question. If we produce it, could you tell us for what purposes you are using particular indicators. What decisions you are really making based on this indicator? And we got out out of this hundred only ten, which is left out. So basically, we are going to produce those ten. But you see that normally, I mean, people like to have more information. But by the end of the day, are you using those? Are they really relevant? And what we need to do for really providing those? I mean, that's that's a different story than this. Day. Thank you. I see there's a question in the chat from Beatrice. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, hello. This is Beatrice Fernandez from the EU Publications Office. Um, thank you very much for this very interesting presentation, Matt. I have two questions. One is about the dashboard and another one about the process. So on the dashboard, and maybe it's because I joined uh, a little bit after your presentation started, how do you represent the actually the actual trend over time in the evolution of each indicator and how do you measure how do you visualize the gap towards the goal so for yeah. every for every leaf for every indicator and then i have a second question yes uh, there is also a small explanation when you go to the tree of truth itself and you put the, the so-called help uh, mark so you can see the, the small introduction how it's measured but uh, I can show you, yes, uh, normally what we do, we're measuring it so that we are comparing the indicators with the last situation. So if we are producing, for example, indicators for the 2020, what did the situation was in 2019? That gives a direction. Is it going a better way or the worst way? And the second one, of course, we have not for all goals, but in the most of case, uh, and that particularly comes, of course, for the Estonian national plan and the government plan. We have a strategic level where the government wants to achieve. In terms of now the SDGs, it's more complicated because on the SDGs, the government have sometimes not put it any target itself. So what we are comparing is we're comparing to the EU level. Are we above the EU level or the average now or not? Or if it's not also applicable, then we're measuring only the direction of the particular indicator. So therefore, it's, 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 sometimes it's hard to recognize, and that's particularly comes to the SDGs. In terms of the national plan and the, the government plan, it's very simple. It's are the target met and what is the direction? That gives also the color for the particular leaf. OK. Thank you. And the second question on the process itself, how much time did it took to develop the, the design, the concept? And related to this, how do you think that this uh, great dashboard could be replicable, actionable in other members? Um, and also at European level, like for example, imagine that we want to have something like this <laughs> at EU level. Could we count on the expertise of Statistics Estonia to learn from this best practice? Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Once again, it, it's very simple uh, uh, solution. And it all together, it took us from the, uh, of course, it, it took a bit time when we, we really developed it, the, the sketches itself. 
like I showed you. And that was purely on a paper. So we didn't do anything in, in a computer side. So we just think about how we can really show so comprehensive picture to everyone. And I would say it, it took almost most of the time. So we, uh, the, the visualization kind of sketches took us around uh, three months. And the particular work with developing the, the dashboard took us only two and a half months. So incredibly short time. And also in terms of the price, I can't say the price tag, but, but it's unbelievable. Basically, it's free of charge. <laughs> now, how it's 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 uh, uh, also if you see about how it's it can be um, uh, leveraged, the data which is used in particular visualization tool is all via the APIs from our open database. So, as I know that all the statistical offices, for example, and not only statistical offices, or on us, the the uh, the Eurostat. Everyone is using the open database where you can really draw the data based on the APIs. So this visualization tool is very simple to leverage to every single such a database. It's more question is how many leaves you want and what are the bounces because that depends on the different countries. And also like we, we discussed here, it depends are it for a central government or for the local government. Okay. Thank you very much. But you can count on us, so we can really definitely we can help. But that's we, we, as we don't have any competition. I mean, uh, across Europe, we are working in Estonia, so we're more than happy to so really support the other countries here uh, on developing such kind of tools. Definitely. We're glad to hear that. Thank you very much. I don't see any questions in the in the chat, um, so I'm gonna uh, take this opportunity to um, ask a question myself. Um, I think you already highlighted it a bit, but what do you see going forward for Tree of Truth? Um, is the next thing going to be Forest of Truth or is there something else? <laughs> um, uh, good that you ask this one because we, we really have a lot of uh, ideas how to develop it further because uh, one is you, you saw that the, um, it's just a, a, a simple tree from the looking from the side of the tree. Now, our, 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 our first idea is now to develop the tree. When you look on a tree from a boob of the tree, and what you see from the boob of the tree is a basically a circle of different leaves. And why it's very important, if you think about the indicators, like a, um, a GDP, when the GDP arises, what are the other leaves which is, are really affected? by this particular leaf. So that's very kind of fascinating story. I mean, how the different leaves are interlinked with each other. And for example, when the poverty, when the poverty drops, I mean, what are the other indicators what are getting better as well? Or for example, when the education is, is, is really getting better or the health the data is getting better. So what are the other leaves? What are really getting green as well, I would say. So it's it's very important to get a, a really understanding cross dependencies across the different leaves. That's one thing what we are going to develop. And the second one, what we have also had a, a, a kind of very interesting discussions. If um, what is the beneath of the tree? So what is the, the source of the tree? <laughs> so, so okay. it, we had a, a couple of different discussions. So uh, uh, that is a, 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 now I would say two uh, groups and one group want to develop it like a, like a taxes. Uh, what taxes the, the government are collecting? So it goes to the so-called like a, like a, like a blood in a, in, a, in, a, in a veins. So basically, what are the, the sources or the taxes or different taxes itself and how it's, it's now gives a kind of a, a power to the tree. But there is other group of the, 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 this kind of um, who wants that the in beneath of the tree, the, 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 how, how you call it in English, but it's the, the lower part of it. So it's, it's maybe the legislation and if you change in a legislation something, how it's kind of, 
uh, does it the, the change of legislation somehow affects to the to the color of the leaf as well or not? It's more hard to, of course, to develop this one, but it's still possible. It's still possible because also the change of legislation can be measured in this term. So it's it's very very interesting um, development plans what we have the fu future of it. And of course, on a separate side, of course, we, we are thinking about really the forestry and and how we really, we really can have it's a, it's a it's a much more visualization in in a, in a local counties. So that's uh, those are different uh, ideas, and, and and I really hope that uh, we can release 2.0 within a one year. So, but it's it's once again it's now getting harder. I mean, once again, the first aim was to give a comprehensive view, a very simplified way, so that every really the, the school people and the politician, I mean, they both understand it on the same way, and that's most important. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But it seems like beautiful initiatives. If you could visualize the process in that way, um, yeah, we'd be very happy to see it. We'll stay tuned for that. <laughs> um, I would like to point out to the audience um, that um, I, th I think we, uh, we're going to wrap up. Um, unless there's anything else you want to address, Mart, that we haven't no, touched upon. It was really a pleasure to give this kind of uh, podcast on our Independence Day, like I mentioned earlier. So it's 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 really fun. Uh, really, thank you, thank you all of you, and and I uh, once again, I, we are more than help uh, if we can support you, and just please uh, wrote us an email or or put a chat, so uh, so always happy to to support. Yeah, and our side, we're total fans of this initiative, so uh, thank you so much for showcasing it today. Thank you. Um, I would like to point out to the audience that we have a short uh, two minute survey um, that uh, we ask, kindly ask you to fill out so that we can tailor these sessions more to your needs. I will put the link in the chat now. Um, and also, uh, as this is one episode of a series of data talks, um, I would like to announce the next two uh, data talks that we have coming up. I'll share my screen for that. Um, so next week we are joined by Antonin Garand from Etalab, uh, who will discuss uh, some of the insights from the French Open Data Portal. Uh, and the week after that, on the 10th of March, uh, we are joined by Alvaro Rodriguez, um, who is from EMC Madrid, which is the uh, national um, transport agency. And he will discuss uh, some of his insights on e-mobility. If you want to register for that and uh, stay tuned, please follow us on Instagram, either EU Data Portal or EU Data Sharing. That is it from my side. Mart, I would like to thank you again so much for being here today with us. Uh, it was very nice to have you. Um, and I would like to say goodbye to the audience and hope you say see you soon. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>